Transformative is a series of short films that try and explain the history of fashion photography as seen from the perspective of the stylist, the makeup artist and the hairdresser. It's a very different thing working for photo shoot than it is for a catwalk, I guess. Mm. Um, and that's a very big part of what Junior Watanabe puts out. That vision is very, you know, what you brought to it is incredibly strong and therefore very different from um, just making the girl look pretty. It's actually almost like another piece of clothing on there. Oh. So tell me, if you wouldn't mind, a little bit about the relationship you have with um, Junior. Junior. Yeah, um, it's very rewarding um, and actually it's uh, uh, rewarding and challenging because he, with every, I mean, I've done a few seasons, I've done a men's as well with him, but yeah. uh, you don't get to see the collection until the day before the show right? and you don't know anything about it. Really? And the way, yeah, the way he works is he'll basically, it's like solving a riddle. He'll email yeah. you and give you a series of like buzzwords or right. um, uh, uh, um, adjectives or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, so what were the buzzwords for this one? For this one uh, was, I think, architectural, geometric, um, schoolgirl was possibly one of them. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember. They were, they were all, but they were all very. And actually, in 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 the first one as well, all the buzzwords were kind of like industrially produced, um, synthetic, yeah. uh, plastics, yeah. blah blah blah. And so then, from those words, you kind of have to try and decipher, decode this riddle, yeah. and just basically spend about a month. Hmm idea after idea, trying things out, taking photos, putting a PDF together, sending it to him. Yeah. He, you'll get feedback, minimal feedback like, no, completely wrong. I really <laughs> or, so is that. Yeah, or I like this idea, explore it. Right. And so I guess for him, he doesn't really want me to be um, uh, challenged by the clothes or also um, influenced by them. He wants right. it to. So you don't see the clothes at all. Nothing. Yeah. Don't no. even know colours. I right. mean, it's really like the minimal sort yeah. of. So so that's a process, and eventually you get to a point where he's kind of happy with the idea that you're proposing. Yeah. And then you go to Paris and then uh, meet him, and he then shows you the collection, and you're like, yeah totally wrong <laughs> I was totally wrong he's like you're totally wrong try again and you're like but we've got 24 hours and right. he was like yeah so so solve it in 24 hours right. and I mean this one was I mean was literally working up until like I don't know what time it was the day before the show right because um, the, the thing he, he kind of had this idea that he wanted this girl uh, he'd imagined her as a schoolgirl, yeah. And you've seen what the models like, and I don't know if that sort of says schoolgirl to you. Mm. The first, the first girl might have been a bit schoolgirl because she had a, a shirt on yeah. and a, and a, and after a that, black dress. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? And all that. Yeah, exactly, and very geometric and architectural and structured yeah. and kind of inhuman. And he had this idea of like he knew that um, after some of our propo uh, my proposal, he wanted. Um, there to be writing on the on the body right. and he wanted and so then I had to kind of step in and say look we've just got to like nail this character mm -hmm. before we try and we tr we've, before we try and work out what to put on yeah. her yeah. and so basically just d made up this this girl who's this who's kind of obsessed could be a school girl obsessed with geometry and structure and she goes she gets so sort of overwhelmed into this whole this sort of maths equations mm. world she starts trying to work out her own uh, yeah. uh, her own equations yeah. about herself and starts writing it all over her body and right. so actually all of these were maths equations you can't see them now because oh, I, I was going to say what, what was writing about but yeah they're, they're sort of yeah x plus y equals hmm. whatever so it's and, and in the same way that this one the idea was that these were industrially produced models sort of on a on a, uh, a thingy line, what do you call it, a production line, right. with this thing that was just stamping them next to right. a stamp. You know, maybe it's a bit off because the, yeah. the, 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 the line's been going on for like <laughs> 20 years and the yeah. eye's a bit wonky. Yeah. But that was the idea that they're these kind of hmm. characters. Um, and we talked just briefly about um, you wanting to go into film. Mm. Um, 
Do you, when you say you want to go into film, do you mean you want to direct films or you want to work in films? Uh, yeah, direct, yeah. Right, okay. Mm. Have you done it yet? Um, uh, not anything particularly long, no. Right. And working with Theo Adams' company is pretty yeah. helpful because yeah. it's theatre. Right. But I think I'd quite like to get into kind of like, uh, I mean, I, I had these ideas um, and working again with Josh, who does this sort of visual communication yeah. stuff about um, doing like fake makeup adverts. Right. And I love the idea of that and really taking the idea of, you know, doing, doing a film that's completely unrelated to makeup and it's just at the very end, yeah. she's got a red lip. You know, yeah. the soldier takes off a helmet and it's a red lip. Do you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or something, or it's a police chase or whatever. It's, <laughs> you know, dial, yeah. whatever. We've got a, a foundation issue. But, and still kind of this element of humour in it. I think that's, yeah. that's where I'd like to go. And why do you think you like humour in your work? Um, uh, why do I like it? I couldn't say, I don't know. Because she was off a release for people of mm. you know, diffuser situations, it's yeah, a yeah. cathartic, it's a whole different, you know, but I'm interested to find out why, why you would want to make your work humorous. I'm not criticizing, I'm just interested. I guess because I just don't see that much humor in the fashion industry. Yeah. And it's just another niche that needs to be filled. Right. Yeah, you know? and like, I mean, actually filled though, not like, oh yeah, we can laugh at ourselves, but I mean, yeah, just actually make people laugh. Yeah. And I guess in the same way that the face painting filled a bit of a gap at the time. Yeah. I think there's a massive gap for humour because yeah. it is an industry that just takes itself very seriously. Mm. And I, uh, on one hand, take what I do seriously, but you know, on the other hand, I'm, you know, spray painting a girl in yeah. with like geometric shapes. It's just <laughs> stupid, you know. Yeah. So. Um, I, th that's, I guess that's why I'm drawn to it. Maybe uh, it's a release of the pressure of an industry that doesn't la seem to laugh at what they're doing that much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder if people find your work humorous. I wonder if they, if they get that. I wonder if people see it and they see it as something more akin to a sort of surrealism or a painterly reference. Yeah. So I pushed you earlier on to find out if you had painters you were referencing oh, yeah. or, or liking. I mean, I, I like... Um, um, mm. For example, Maurizio Catalan right. is a guy that does toilet paper, yeah. and I think his art's great. It's really funny. Yeah. Um, and put a lot of humour in his work. Definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm sorry, I did see one of the images that you pulled up, which was a Spider Man. Do you want to pull it up? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just an art uh, to because so, this was supposed to be like um, the idea was this was the uh, um, uh, activist issue. Right. So the idea was... For ID. For ID, yeah. yeah that uh, rather than doing activists, which yeah. is what I think they thought that I was going to try and like sort of paint grungy activists, it was yeah. just to imagine that the activists had done something on the models and then gone. Right. So this is like what's left over after the protest. Right. And so I thought it was kind of funny to pick on subject a couple of subjects and just make and sort of have a bit of a laugh at them like this is like webaccessforall.com yeah. is written on a spider-man yeah you know and there's that whole debate about having free web access for all at the time that seemed like a relevant one so it'd be funny yeah. to paint him as a spider-man yeah and then there's another one um with a girl who was like sticking her tongue out and rather than uh, doing the um anarchy a and then writing arsenal <laughs> like the football yeah. team after so yeah. it was supposed to kind of be a bit of a you know, just a bit of a laugh tip rather than being, the rest of the issue is, you know, very serious and yeah. people, yeah, and I just don't feel a need to really make a protest. Yeah. <laughs> um, how much sexuality is, is there in your work? Um, I think my um, aesthetic for eroticism, or for the erotic is, probably growing right. as I work yeah. and but I don't know if part of that is just purely being um, more and more uh, sort of confronted with images yeah. you know the world of tumblr and 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 that often there's a lot of sexual images but mm. there's there isn't maybe the erotic elements not there yeah. and that's another emotional element if yeah. that makes sense yeah, yeah. so you get a lot of photos of girls doing selfie and boobs out and bums out and 
you know, that kind of thing. But there's really nothing sort of sensual about it. And I guess if maybe with the tongue, for example, yeah. that image, there's, a, there's something a bit more emotional there, yeah. which I'm just interested in it as another element of, of emotion, this idea of sensuality or eroticism. And, um, yeah. So erotic imagery is very stylized, incredibly stylized. Yeah. I mean, any of the sort of um, BDSM stuff, you, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a code. Yeah. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's something that I wonder, I would love to see your take on that, mm. how you would subvert that. Um, or maybe, maybe you wouldn't subvert it. I suppose it's about, it's just not revealing too much, yeah. which I guess a lot of these things images that try to be erotic or sensual or sexy do there's too much revealed mm -hmm. and for me the whole point of something like that is to it's again it's about letting the viewer do the work yeah and the viewer having their opinion or the viewer taking the image and it being exactly more of a, a provoking image yeah. rather than boob shot <laughs> do you yeah. know what i mean yeah, yeah. um for example and i don't know how much photography i'd like to know who he's doing but um is it Harry Pen Penicotti? Yeah. Pe like some of his images, or say Donna Trope, they're yeah. much more erotic. Yeah. Um, there's a girl licking an ice lolly, you know, whatever, yeah. than, than I think a lot of images that are produced today that try and be sexy. And I think that would be more of my stance on it yeah. than doing anything that gives too much away. And how moral are you? Are there things you think, I would never do that? Not just in the erotic department, but in um, other departments, but it can be. Mm, um, I'd never do makeup on animals. Right. Oh, really? No. I think um, with anyone or any animal that isn't in control of their own... Uh, uh, what's... Um, Destiny? Yeah, that can't, doesn't have the ability to speak for themselves. Right. Then I'd say no. Yeah. Right. And that, uh, yeah. So, why did you? Were you thinking that might be something? Your limits, your parameters. No, I haven't. I don't know you well enough to, <laughs> to decide yeah. your limits. I was interested. I was just interested where you thought that you had things that you. Some people, you know, I, I won't. I tend not to. This is the reality of being um, having opinions in this business. Mm. I tend not to shoot fur. For mm. years, I said I will never shoot fur, mm. and all of a sudden, somebody says to me, "Well, you wrote that jacket you shot it was astrakhan." <laughs> I wonder, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like mm, then you sort of think, "Well, okay." And next time it comes up, it's like you know you're working with somebody you really love, and, and mm. yeah, if it is, mm. and they put a, a piece of fur in front of you, you think, "I'll just get on with it." It's still a so. No, it's, it, sure. you, so there are certain I I tend not to shoot fur. Mm. I'd rather not, so I don't like it. Um, and I would tend not to shoot smoking, but I smoke it, I shoot it all the time. Mm. Um, but I don't like it. I don't find mm. that, you know, a lot of my images I use to mm. not make yeah, smoking yeah. Seem, still seem glamorous. Yeah. So there are moral issues in what I do. You know, there's issues about how women are portrayed. You know, mm. Portrayed all the same size, all the same sex, mm. or women all the same sex. Mm. Those are all the same age, all the same. Yeah. Sort of, so those are moral issues that I mm. deal Thanks. with. I guess it's difficult or different as well for you being male mm -hmm. and me being female mm -hmm. and I think there's also a communication element there so that if I took a photo of something or you took a photo you know whatever mm -hmm. that you'll get a different reaction because it because purely because of the gender differences and yeah. what people can read into from that as well yeah. um, I mean I'm not really interested in pornography or that kind of uh, Thing and that's not so much more is just I'm not really interested in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really have. I guess my morals are just fairly generic human models. Or just being nice to people and allowing, yeah. hearing other people's opinion and listening. I mean, mm. yeah. Don't know. I wonder if you're interested in photography as such because it's not particularly clever. Possibly. Yeah. Um, it's more of a, so say, quite a highly coded thing. Of course, you can read mm. intellectually into anything at all, mm. so you could say it's clever in that way. But it tends to be more to do with a set of codes, visual codes that people use. True. Which people, other people or other people find stimulating. Yeah. So I guess I'd yeah. rather read about it, you know, yeah. than watch it, for mm. example. But again, it's just a... Mm, yeah, it's an interesting... I just never... I haven't really thought about it that much. I could understand people might think I'd be interested because of like some of the work produced might be provocative in that way, like the tongue or whatever. Yeah. 
but um, your image will find itself on sites that's got a lot more uh, erotic content. Mm. I mean, are you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, it's that's you can't stop somebody seeing something one way and somebody saying, "Oh, that's gross," yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, in another way. So I don't really mind how it's seen. Yeah, it's not up to me at that point. Yeah. So I mean, that's the difference, I guess, between working when we used to work with magazines, mm. when there was no internet. You had some control of where your own were seen. So like, I'll put my music in this magazine because yeah. that magazine endorses my mm. sense of how I see things. Mm. But now we're basically putting our images out there and they can appear anywhere and do appear anywhere. Yeah. I guess if you're really keen, if it's all, it's all about you at the end of the day and how this how you want your journey, you know. And if I was particularly, felt particularly strongly, perhaps I would write something about the image to go with it but I, I don't think uh, I don't think there's that much of a need you know this web access rule.com you either get it or you don't mm. <laughs> you either yeah. think it's somebody doing a spider-man face paint or you can read into it and say oh there is another layer it's a bit of a joke yeah. so I mean it's as that's what I was talking about the lang the visual language becoming kind of esoteric in yeah. that somebody who is who understands that kind of thing or works in the industry and is able to look at those things or the way something's placed or the way or the eyebrow thing would understand yeah. whereas yeah. the general public would just be like oh cool spider-man face paint whatever yeah. and i think that's where it gets interesting yeah.